My name is Toves and welcome back to another Planet Zoo video. So I haven't made any for a while. It's been, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I've moved house. Uh, I've changed a bunch of things in my life. It's been over about, I think it's been about six months actually since my last video, maybe even longer than that. But I am back playing some more Planet Zoo. I'm back in Zimba Zoo, which is what you're seeing on your screen right now. Um, and I have been kind of inspired by the recent... Uh, announcement and the release of the Arid Animal Pack by Frontier. Um, I've been very fortunate enough to get early access to that, so I very much appreciate that. And it so perfectly fits to what I was actually, ironically, kind of already working on in this zoo. So I haven't, I have still been playing, I have still been doing a bit of recording, just haven't actually finished anything up until this point, um, and haven't edited anything for a while. But yeah, so I thought this was a good excuse to finally, um, yeah, get my get myself in gear and actually put some videos out. So yeah, what you're going to see in this episode is um, a big extension, a big extension to this zoo um, that I've been working on for a good few months actually, and it just so happens to be that I was already working on a camel habit habitat and i was going to be using the battery and camel um but yeah there's a dromedary camel that's so much <laughs> fits both so much better i have been working on a large area called the northern deserts uh, which is what you're going to see in this episode but i thought i'd just give you a quick reminder of what this suit looks like this is using the new feature it's like flying cinematic camera um so this is the big um entrance area and you can see the 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 um gift shop and stuff on the right side yeah so this is a new tool that's um, available in the new free update that lets you plot these kind of camera movements so this is not me moving the camera i'm not controlling the camera my hands are off the camera at the moment um, and it's flying around by itself which is really cool so yeah there is the red crane crown habitat red crowned crane habitat if anything uh, on the left hand side there and then in front of us here is the flamingo habitat which i think we did in about episode two or three Still some incomplete bits um, down the front. But yeah, we're flying over this red crane, uh, the flamingo habitat. And at the back there, you can see, as we come up the hill a little bit, you can see the warthog habitat, so the common warthogs. Um, I think I did that in maybe I said five. And there's, a, and there's a little cafe up here. And yeah, as we sweep round... Can see the big um, the big netted structure on the left hand side there. So we're going to be building just behind that, and it's going to be, as I said, a big extension. And there's lots and lots of stuff. What I've done in this episode is giving you a bit of a speed build, um, but there's not actually too much of it. There's a lot more stuff actually to tour around that I haven't recorded the speed build footage for. So as ever. I think that usually ends up being the case in my videos, but um, yeah, if you haven't seen my stuff before, it tends to be highly detailed. Hopefully you're sort of seeing that from what we're looking at here. Um, bit cosy vibes, um, semi-realistic, but not too obsessive about it. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll see something you like. So we're going to fly over and I'll start talking to you about the, the, the big area that's going to change right over here. So as I said, loads to squeeze into this one. The very first thing you're seeing here, we very quickly do, is dropping in an old build of mine, the Fennec Fox Habitat, uh, which I kind of end up encompassing into this area and feels like it fits. I'd never actually built this into a zoo, so ended up feeling like it fits quite well. So this whole section, um, as I said, it's the northern, the entrance to the northern deserts area. So I wanted it to feel like it had kind of like a bit of a I guess like a Moroccan or a Tunisian Tunisian vibe to it um, and that's all starts really with this great big station building that I'm creating so it's supposed to be a bit of a kind of um, you know a visual feature a bit of a weenie um, in the park and um, yeah it's the thing that kind of lands that that overall kind of aesthetic and so what I'm doing here is something that you've seen me probably if you've watched me before doing a bunch of times is building my own little kind of build set 
Um, so I do this for sort of two different reasons, actually. Like you can see that all the different pieces that I've created there. It's to give me, it's to give me like a way of um, experimenting with the aesthetic, um, but also giving me something practical that I can then build. So as you can see me sort of, you know, we won't stay on this for too long, but you can see me kind of assembling the pieces here. Um, and what that gives you is just the flexibility to kind of go back and change and reshape it and um, yeah, remodel it and redesign it around what you're thinking. So yeah, it takes a bit of extra time, um, and it but it ends up being something quite useful and something quite flexible. So just wanted to have lots of those kind of yeah, kind of details that land this North African vibe. So interestingly, in the stuff that obviously there's no build pieces for this um for this animal pack that we've got come out because we already have you know we've already got um you know we've already got things that vaguely fit interestingly when you look at the the designs and the and the artwork and actually even the um the career scenario that that frontier have put out with this pack it's all using the indian pack and actually when you if you're a bit of a stickler for the kind of aesthetics, which I'm not massively, I'm not obsessive about it, but there's quite a lot of the designs and the and the visual kind of motifs in the Indian pack that you just don't actually really find in India in in North Africa. So there is quite a different sort of aesthetic. You have the kind of flowery designs um, and and shapes and things that you find in Indian architecture you don't really see in North African architecture so I kind of wanted to find a bit of a middle ground so I ended up using my own I have used a few places I have ended up building my own um yeah my own kind of bits and pieces using the Indian parts but not too much so you can see there's been a big jump forward here so I this whole area um ends up and you'll see this all in more detail when we get to the tour but ends up feeling like a, a bazaar like a market an Af North African market and that was always kind of the idea I had was both to have the function of the station there um, the ferry station so that you know I can move the guests around um, but also have this kind of overall kind of gateway thing um, into the rest of the uh, rest of this area of the zoo so this is a little stall a bunch of these things I'll if I remember, I'll put up on the workshop. Um, if you see something that you like that I haven't done that with, then do feel free to message me in the comments and things. One of the things that I wanted to make sure I did, actually, just before we move off of the conversation about the station, is I have been guilty of this a, a few times before in, in Planet Zoo, building, um, sort of forgetting about the stations until quite late on. Obviously, they kind of want to be something that you think about early enough that you can get them close enough to your entrance um in Tigwadu, obviously Tigwadu is quite small and so it doesn't matter so much with that one because it probably doesn't need any kind of transport but in something like like zimba it does need to have that consideration kind of early in there so yeah finishing up that that stall and now we're moving actually into the camel habitat itself so there's quite a bit going on with this this cam camel habitat You'll see that it's like two or three different parts. You see that kind of ruined wall at the background there. That was the that was the kind of the the thing that inspired me to start creating this building. Um, and what I wanted to do was make it feel. It's probably quite kind of theme parky um, in design. This one, it's probably a little bit less realistic than you might, you know, see in a zoo. But um, yeah, mostly just for fun. It just felt like something that I kind of wanted to carry on the theme. Um, so created this kind of custom, started creating this custom shelter for um, for the camels. But it both ends up being kind of, again, a bit of a kind of visual point, but a bit of a visual, kind of visual, visual motif, but also having a practical purpose. You'll see as we get later on into the video, there's also, um, yeah, kind of less glossy, a uh, bit more realistic uh, shelter for them at the back in the back there so i'm going to talk to you a little bit about camels because i did a bit of reading um and i think i'm going to start doing this and smattering these into videos because i quite like it when people do this sort of stuff and i don't do it enough i tend to talk about the the, the builds too much so the dromedary camel thought to be largely domesticated around about four thousand years so interestingly enough they don't really exist it's thought that they don't really exist as a wild animal anymore 
though, because they've got such a kind of, I guess because they've got such kind of hardiness and they're so practical and they're kind of so useful to um, the people that have them is that, that, you know, in, in Africa and in, in, in um, you know, Arabian countries and actually bizarrely now in Australia, I've been, been in Australia for quite a long time, they're seen as such a kind of working working animal. So they've been domesticated largely for something like 4,000 years, we think. Um, and I didn't actually realise this. Actually, I've been on a camel twice in my life um, and I didn't realise that the hump, I think as a kid you kind of think the hump has got something to do with water but it really doesn't it's actually fat so the hump is made up of a fat reserve um that again is part of that kind of hardiness of the animal that means they can last an enormous amount of time without a lot of food but what is what they are famous for obviously is their ability to you know go without water for a long time so they can actually drink up to 100 liters or 30 gallons in something like 10 minutes which is pretty crazy, which is obviously means they can go for a long period of time without drinking again. So it's, you know, they do have, they do have reserves. They have got three stomachs actually, which is part of the way that they kind of digest um, food and break it down. And I guess get the kind of maximized, um, yeah, maximized kind of efficiency of energy and, and resources and things. But they, yeah, so they obviously they have, um, yeah, they've just got a real kind of hardiness and a resistance to the environments they're in, which they seem like one of those really interesting um, stories of evolution that like you know, nature has made them the way they are. So even down to the f- fact like they have, so they have three sets of eyelids and two rows of eyelashes, and that's all about keeping the sand out of their eyes. So if you can imagine, you know, the sand's blowing around um yeah that could could be a a major hindrance to an animal so that and the fact that they can completely close their nostrils so that they don't (laughs) don't breathe in too much sand really cool like really cool and they can run up to 40 miles an hour which is as fast as a racehorse so actually in some countries you see that like it's you know it's a sport it's a, a bit of a thing that camel racing is a and actually weirdly just jumping back to the habitat here so you are actually seeing me building with the Bactrian and camel so i built this habitat i think i said this in the intro i built this habitat before the announcement of this pack um and so yeah it was just a complete coincidence i didn't have any kind of um you know foreknowledge that that frontier were going to be doing this but i sort of just thought well i'll just i'll just take a bit of a liberty and i'll put the battery and camels in here um and then yeah luckily enough they ended up coming out with the, the the pack that's perfect for me so we're moving towards the end of the speed build here and as i said there's loads more to see i am actually kind of excited to share this one with you all i hope you really enjoy this because there's so much to see in this one um and this is the just as the at the end of this speed build this is the bit more practical kind of backstage um shelter for the camels so i'm creating this like natural supposed to be kind of like I can't remember what you call that, uh, like natural fibres and, and, and like stick uh, kind of all woven together. It's supposed to be a bit kind of scruffy looking. Zimba is, that's kind of the aesthetic of Zimba, that it's got kind of a modern twist, but it's got a bit of a, you know, a bit of a softer underbelly, a bit of an old fashioned, a little bit more like run down behind the scenes and things. So yeah, putting that together, again, this will be up on the workshop. Um, I will let you stick around and watch this last little 30 seconds, guys, and then said do stick around for the tour because this is going to be a good one. Right, peeps, welcome back to the tour. So we're starting off in the entrance plaza. Again, we're going to make our way down this way. But I thought I'd just start from here because they get this little first little, uh, yeah, indication that something new has happened down there. That's the first glimpse you get of the of the big new area. So we're going to move our way down that path and I'll point out some changes as we go. As I said, there's loads of things to get done. So, um yeah, it's going to be a bit fair old bit of the tour. So there's the red crane crown habitat that we had in the last habitat in the last episode, um, and you can walk along that path now. Previously, when I did that episode, you couldn't walk down there, so I fixed that. I guess unfortunately, 
I've had to turn it off um, for now, guests being in the zoo because it's getting kind of really laggy and stuff. So already we're having to turn that off. So here's the first view. There's a bunch of backstage areas here, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, but the really the best bits are down this way. So there's the tower there. Um, and I think this has all come together really well. Like it's pretty lush. Um, it's a bit more developed and a bit more, as I said, sort of theme parky than um, some of the other some of the other bits of the zoo. But I think I'm kind of happy with that. So this is the little entrance kind of sign, Northern Deserts. And as I said, it's got to feel like it's like a... Um, yeah, like a kind of bizarre sort of thing. So guests will come walk through here. I, I have smattered around, as if you've seen me before, you'll know I'm someone that loves loves adding details in. So I started thinking, well, it's quite hot. It's like Africa. So there's probably going to have to be um, like water fountains and things here and there. So let's go through here. I was trying to work out what the best way of showing you all of this is because there's so much to get through. So this is your first impression of of the kind of marketplace, the bazaar. Um, and yeah, you have to let me know what you think in the comments. So you can sort of see way off in the distance there. You can see some some camels jumping around. So you get that sense of the like the depth and the size of this. I think we're probably, I think we'll probably just take a little look in here first. Hopefully this doesn't dump me up on the roof. But as you'll see, there is a um, a staff member waiting here. So if you go in through this door... We are actually in this little waiting area for the river ride, so the, the transport ride. So we can come down here, and here is the boat waiting for us to get on. Should we choose to, please don't dump me up on the roof. Um, and that doesn't really go anywhere yet. You're getting a bit of a glimpse of where we're going, but we're headed down that way. But eventually this will end up being something that kind of links through to the rest of the rest of the zoo. I'm not sure we're going to have it everywhere, but... Kind of keen to have it so that you can kind of get into a few different areas of the zoo. So I kept this fairly, um, I mean, as you can see, it's quite, <laughs> it's quite kind of ornate and grand. I love how light and colourful it looks in here, though. Actually, quite happy with the way that turned out. So we'll have a little quick little look over here. And then I think we'll come back through the main section of the market and I can show you the shop and the coffee shop and all that sort of thing. So those of you who have been with me for a while will probably recognise this. This is the fennec fox habitat that I built ages ago, um, I think when the fennec foxes first arrived in the game. So I haven't done loads to this. I've done a little bit of dressing, which we'll see as we go around the back of it because it previously had um, another area. But I've sort of built this all in now, so it kind of it feels like it fits okay here. Uh, there is a whole episode on the build of this habitat, so should you want to see that, you can you can go and check that one out as well. Uh, and I wanted it to feel like it's all kind of weathered and a bit dishevelled, and um, I looked at quite a lot of different reference pictures for these sorts of places, and, yeah, I wanted it to feel like it was not too rough around the edges, but rough enough to look convincing. So it's supposed to be that there's you know, little shops and things, as you go and some of these are practical so these are obviously stalls that you can um that guests can walk up to buy things oh that's good on right on time she's waving to us uh and yeah there's so like little bits of clutter not all of this is mine so some of this i've lifted off the workshop i think these are from either from ricey or shifty uh shifty off the workshop um as ever they'll all be in the collection and then you've got a toilet over this way. It's a guest toilet down there. I think there's a sign there for them. Yeah, there is. Uh, and then this is I'm quite happy with this, actually. So this is a coffee shop. Actually quite kind of modern looking. Um, and I've used the I've used the like conservation screens because you can change the screen on these now. So I found this screen. I'm assuming that someone made this for Planet Coaster, but I found this screen and adapted it a little bit. Uh, the, the actual artwork that's on the screen there and I made this little console and things so yeah you can get coffees it's actually coffee and donuts I think that I used and there's a whole load of kind of backstage detail there to sell it a little 
fridges and little coffee machine that I made. Again, I'll probably put some of this stuff on the workshop. If I don't remember to, then make sure you give me a nudge in the comments. I made this sign um, because, yeah, we're in Africa, so I thought we'd throw a bit of love to... Oh, we're actually in Namibia, but we, we yeah show a little bit of love to Ethiopian coffee. Made this little kind of little area for collecting your bits. And then it's all kind of supposed to be like, yeah, sitting on the stalls and hanging out. You'll see there's another little area over there, which I think will go. Let's go this way. God, it's, there's so many bits to see, guys. I'm trying to remember the best way to do this. Um, yeah, and I love these little, I love, this was, I think this is the very first idea really that I had was a picture in my head of like these little stalls that look like they're movable carts um, and then, yeah, kind of how that would all end up working. So we can go that way. We're going to end up over there in a minute because that's where the camels are. You can see there's like a big backdroppy bit over there. A few little sitting areas and things dotted around. A bit of shade. What that camel doing? Can't work out what that camel looks like. It's lost its head. I'm sure we'll find that out in a minute. But we're going to take we'll take a very quick detour down this little. One of the things you notice when you look at, and it's quite hard to achieve in the game. But one of the things you notice when you look at like reference pictures of these sorts of places is they're quite kind of hickledy pickledy and like lots of different little ways to go and um yeah lots of things all stuck together so that's kind of what i was trying to achieve so again like little another little kind of implied sitting area from the coffee shop and then if you come through here it's obviously the back door of the coffee shop there and then that brings you back round to the other side of the fennec foxes so you can come you could have come down this way if you wanted to uh i think we'll go so we'll go this way just to show you the back of the fennec foxes and you'll also notice on the right hand side again one of my habitats that i haven't used for ages or well, that i built i think when they originally came out as a one-off habitat the meerkat so we'll just do a quick run around that because that's one i've shown before tiny little bit of updates to the back of the fennec foxes so you've got another view to come around you can see them um, from this side They've got a little pool for, for hanging out in, should they choose to. Um, actually, let's just poke our heads through here because this is all new as well. So not loads to this, but again, a bit of a like backstage area. So you know, some some containers and some rubble. That's actually, that gate there actually leads right around to the front entrance just so you can get your bearings. So let's come back through this gate. I've tried actually, the thing that I've tried to do all the way through this zoo so far is make sure that there is places for like access, like big vehicles to come through. So should they be moving vehicles, uh, moving animals around, they've got a way to do it. Um, so let's go quickly visit the meerkats in their little area. Most of this is the same as the original build that I did of it little bit of an update again it's quite kind of dressed and um highly themed and stuff here and again should you wish to see more about that uh yeah have a look in my channel <laughs> search for meerkats in my channel you'll see the original build of this i think the only change i've done is i've built this like climbing frame in there they tend to kind of like not as active as you'd kind of want them to be meerkats i'm considering maybe building a second location for them so let's come back round up here and we'll go and we'll do a left this time and we'll come round to see the camels so i kind of thought i'd make this a bit of a feature because me meerkats tend to be quite a like high ticket um animals in in zoo these days so yeah i think we thought we'd make that kind of a bit more of an interesting area so here's the actual camel habitat. Um, and as I said in the in the speed build there, like it was originally built for the dromedary, uh, sorry, for the Bactrian camel. Um, but yeah, it just happened to be that at the point where I was just about ready to, ready to record the video, I found out about the, the um, arid animal pack. So yeah, I thought that was perfect timing. So they've got like a bit of a, a bit of a moat for separation 
Um, there's supposed to be like that. There's some hot wire sort of separating these so that the camels don't just come over. Um, and then it's all, yeah, it feels a bit kind of rusticy and a bit rough and they kind of like jumping around in there for some reason. I think it's because of the access that they've got. Um, they're a bit, they're actually a bit too big um, as far as the game's concerned. What is that guy doing? Should we go over and see him? Let's go over and see him. Just check out he's not stuck. It looks a bit like he might be stuck. Are you dead? Are you a dead camel? You're not happy, are you? Let's move you. Not quite sure why you're standing there, but you can, you, you do you. There you go. Consider yourself saved. And the camels themselves, like looking at the models, like they're super cool. Let's check them out in a bit more detail. Because I think we sort of take for granted now how good the models are. Like, look at that guy. He's such a badass. He's got a bit of like scratching and stuff on him. He's, hopefully they're not fighting. And you can start to see those like color variations and the whatever that's called, the kind of the way that their fur works and stuff. So like we've got we've got like a dark one here and then one that's got more like a kind of albino thing going on back there. But it's all supposed to be feeling sort of kind of scruffy and a bit rough and and um, yeah, not too not too overdressed inside that. I'm actually quite happy with the way that turned out. So let's go back over here and then we'll just make our way around so we can see the backstage of their habitat. Um, and the idea of this was, I have to say, I didn't, some of this I didn't build. Um, this was actually kind of some of the ploppable uh, blueprints from the workshop. That's weird, isn't it? Look at the way that that's doing that. That's kind of weird. Ooh, ooh. And yeah, so I thought I'd use it all as like staff buildings because I'm quite a long way from the staff buildings here. So I have done a few things where I've like, you know, obviously put it all together, put the steps in and, and that sort of thing. I wanted something that was a bit of a backdrop that that kind of gave you a bit of a an edge because I think this is probably the, coming towards the edge of the zoo here. So I pretty much crammed in as many different staff buildings into there as I possibly could. So... And we come round the side, so you get like a really good, like long way round view of the of the camels. And I actually have to say, I really enjoy. I kind of really like looking back that way. Exactly what I kind of had in my head. We've got two. We've got these kind of two towers, like lots of visual stuff going on there, right through to the bazaar at the back. It's not something I've ever done before, but I know there's there's a few people that talk about the. You know, kind of using visual cues to pull you along a path. Um, so that's, I think that's turned out pretty well. So big plans over on the left-hand side here. This is all where a whole load of stuff is already taking place that you can't see because I've done it in another episode. Um, but there's going to be a whole load of new things over there. So yeah, make sure there's a gate around the back here. So, that you, so should they ever want to get the camels in and out, they can do that. Um, and then there is a staff entrance here we'll go in there and have a little poke around in a minute so we can see a bit more detail and then this is like there i guess kind of where they get locked up at night that was the plan for this so keepers can get in there there's like an implied sort of trough system here aircon and that sort of thing in the back of this um, and they kind of come out they come and hang out in here quite a lot um, and the system is supposed to be that when it's time for them to be closed up at night, you see this is kind of like on a uh, like a wheeling system. So yeah, the keeper would wheel it across and then secure it over there so the camera's got to get back out. And when there are guests in, actually, they come around and view them from, from all the different angles there. So let's go back into the habitat. This took a while, actually, this build. Um, I kind of wanted it to be... Yeah, feeling kind of North African in style, but it's not perfect, It's but it's I'm pretty happy with it. So I think that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Very much appreciate the patience. And I've got a bit of hay fever and coldiness going on at the moment, so I do apologise about me probably sounding a bit more nasal than I used to <laughs> last time you spoke, last time you heard from me. Um, so, yeah, do stick around because there's going to be a few more things happening really soon. And very much appreciate you hanging around. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Toves, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.